This is PHP My Admin, and this is PHP My Admin's website. Now, before we go any further, I want to be very, very clear that the PHP My Admin software is far superior than their website design is. So in this video, I want to talk about what PHP My Admin is and how it works. Also, we're gonna talk about how to install it in Docker so that you can log into any of your compatible databases, whether they're MySQL or Maria databases. But before we get into all of that, a quick message from today's video sponsor. YourCDKey.com is a great place to get Windows 10 keys at incredibly low prices. So here we are on the Microsoft Windows 10 Pro page, and right here you can see the current price is $20.05. But if you use the coupon code that's in the description down below, you'll get it even cheaper. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste that in here and click apply. And now our new total for Windows 10 Pro is about 15 bucks. Now I have the option to go ahead and view the keys right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. Then I'll click on get the key. And then I'm gonna come over here and right there you can change the product key. So go ahead and click on that. I'm gonna go ahead and change the product key right here. So I've entered my key and I'll click next. Then I'll click on activate. And here we can see that Windows is activated. Next, what we wanna do is go ahead and validate the key installation. And right there you can see the Windows 10 Professional Edition is permanently activated. So head on over to yourcdkey.com to get your next Windows 10 Pro key at ridiculously low prices. So here we are on the PHP My Admin documentation site, and it's gonna have basically the same information as their official website. However, I really do think that their documents website is far superior in its presentation and ease of use. Uh, but basically, like it says here, it is a free software tool written in PHP that is intended to handle the administration of MySQL or MariaDB database servers. Pretty straightforward. So a lot of the containers that we talk about on this channel uh, have some sort of a database attached to them for storing data, that sort of thing. I mean, that's that's what a database is, right? So, uh, and in fact, most of the databases we use uh, in our containers are either a Maria database or a MySQL database. And that's really why I wanted to give a demonstration and kind of an introduction to uh, PHP My Admin is so that you can do some pretty cool stuff with manipulating data, running backups, that sort of thing. So. Uh, uh, basically here on this website, it gives uh, a, a list of their supported features, uh, whether it's uh, creating, browsing, editing, dropping databases, viewing tables, columns, indexes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I don't wanna waste your time reading this to you. You're all capable people uh, who can read this for yourself, but uh, this is a very cool tool that I've actually been using uh, for, for more than a decade now. I, I used to build websites uh, for a few different companies over the years. Uh, originally we were doing stuff in Joomla, like one point three uh, until the 1.5 thing came out and it was absolute trash and all of our sites got hacked um, for a number of reasons, but part of it really was Joomla. Um, and then, then I left that company and started doing my own thing, started building in WordPress and the whole time, whether it was Joomla or WordPress or, or, or Drupal, all of those different platforms, uh, including a lot of the containers that we use now have a database attached to them, like I had mentioned earlier. And it's always a good idea to have some way to get in and manipulate a database if you want to do that. Um, and I, I want to kind of show you some of the steps to doing that. Now, I will say just up front before we go any further in this video, this is one of those things that you do not want to make publicly available on the internet uh, if you're doing self hosting unless you've got a ton of security in place. Uh, that's, you know, that's having, you know, custom access lists, that's having uh, firewalls in place, that's having something like Othelia for second or even third factor authentication in order to just get to the dashboard in order to log in. This is not something you wanna play around with because if somebody gets into your database and your 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 passwords aren't hashed properly or, or whatever the case may be, um, you're screwed, and and they can they can do any number of things. Whether it's uh, compromising the the identity of somebody who has their information on your databases, uh, they could just uh, delete your database entirely and all of the data in it. They could uh, you know put up uh, their own information. They could replace your content with their content. I actually used to see that a lot again back in the Joomla 1.5 days. Um, so there's a lot of things that can happen if somebody is able to get access to your uh, database. So be very very careful about how you grant access to this application. If you if you really feel you must uh, have uh, remote access, make sure it's only accessible on, on something like zero tier or tail scale or something like that, that requires implicit uh, authorization by you to have access to the network that it's even 
on. So I just want to put that little that little disclaimer out there. This is not a joke. This is not something to play with. This is this. You want to make sure this is as locked down as you can possibly make it. So if we jump over to this page, this is a WordPress instance that I built uh, just because I wanted to do some testing with the WordPress theme and just put this up and here we are. I don't care what happens to this database, but uh, just in case I did care, uh, the first thing I wanna show you is how to run a quick backup of your databases. Now, again, this is for MySQL or Maria databases, at least at the time of recording this video. So. If we come up to the top, we can see that we're, which server we're connected on, which database we're connected to. Uh, down below, we can see uh, all of the tables that are in this database. There are 35 tables. And of course, inside all of those tables, uh, there are uh, additional fields uh, for you know usernames, passwords, uh, all, all kinds of different things. All of your data gets stored in a database with regards to things like, in this case, WordPress. So. We wanna run a backup of this and it's super, super easy. Uh, all we've gotta do is let's come back to here. Let's go to our databases and then right up here at the top, oops, I lied, let's go to right there. And right up here at the top, we can see export and we've got some options. We can just do a quick full export that will just dump the database as it is. It will not or should not uh, affect your live database. This is just downloading a copy of it to your local machine uh, just by doing a quick export here. Now, if you wanted to go a step further, uh, you could, pick and choose the information that you want to download um, by you know checking the boxes over here uh, and over here and over here. And of course, all 35, that's, that is what happens to be uh, for this particular instance. Other databases will have three tables or 3,000 tables. There's, there's a lot of different uh, options when it comes to databases like this. So uh, doing a, a custom export, uh, you can uh, decide what data you want to export. Maybe you only wanna export your users. Maybe you only want whatever it happens to be. You can pick and choose what you'd like to export here. You can also choose the format that you would like to download this to. Uh, there are CSV, there's JSON, there's you know PDF. If you really wanted to do that, SQL is what I'm going to do here. Uh, that's kind of the default. It's the easiest to re-import in my opinion. Uh, below that, there are a ton more options for output uh, where you can lock them, you can, re you can rename, export a database and columns. There's a lot of stuff in here um, that you can do. Uh, one of the things that I used to have to do regularly uh, was actually add the, these two options is add uh, create database statement as well as a drop table view procedure function event trigger statement, uh, just because sometimes there might already be something in a database that you're trying to overwrite. And if you don't have those uh, options checked in there, it will just say, sorry, that information's already there and there's nothing I can do about it. So if you want to be able to re-import over something, you'd want to uh, make sure that you go ahead and, and check at least this. Uh, you could also you know, create a database with an import this way as well. Uh, that's something you could check if you wanted to do that. But there's a lot of information in here that you can use to customize your uh, exports. <clears throat> However, like I said, I just want to do a quick export and you can see all my options went away. So uh, I'm going to leave it as SQL like we talked about before and I'm going to click go and there is our database backup. Just that quickly and easily, we've downloaded our backup. Now, this is a very, very empty WordPress site. So uh, there's not a, it's not a big database. I, I believe it's, it's a few kilobytes, really. Um, let me, let me go to my downloads. Um, and then let's do, oops, let's do, do, do view, uh, details. I, it's four, four megs, so not 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 a terribly small, but but still a moderately small database, and we were able to export it in no time at all. So now we can uh, move that database if we want to. We can have it as a backup in case something goes wrong later. Uh, lots of good reasons to have database backups, and that's really what I wanted to show the primary function of with PHP My Admin. Now, of course, it, it's more than that. You can do more than that. You know, maybe maybe. Maybe you've got an issue where something in your website changed, um, but uh, maybe you've got a signature on all of your uh, all of your posts that you just kind of copy and paste and drop in there, and then something changes, and then all of a sudden you need to go back and you don't and you've got a hundred articles and you don't want to go through article by article by article and edit and copy and paste and fix and edit and paste and save and do all of that. You could then uh, actually run SQL commands in here that would 
basically look for a string of characters and then replace it with another string of characters. Now that's something I used to have to do quite a bit. Uh, again, often we would, our, the company I used to work for more than a decade ago, they got hacked. They were dropping base 64 code into the actual uh, posts and pages on these different sites and coming into here and looking for those and deleting them through PHP my admin was really the quickest way to do that uh, for, for what we were doing anyway. So that's all to say that there's a lot of really great uses for PHP my admin. So with that kind of covered, uh, kind of what you might use it for, uh, again, mostly I use it for, uh, for database backups to make sure I've got my own copy in addition to running duplicati and that sort of thing. So, how do we install PHP My Admin? It's actually super, super easy, and I wanna show you that next. So what we're gonna do is come over to their official uh, PHP My Admin hub.docker.com page, and uh, they, like, like, like we can see here, uh, there's, it's fully listed out, tons of information in here, uh, lots of really good stuff. And uh, also, um, because this co keeps coming up, um, you can come over to the tags page here and you can see what OS slash architecture these images are compatible with. Now, this is uh, Linux 386, uh, ARM64, ARM v6, uh, lots of different versions here. So you need to make sure that you use uh, the appropriate tag for the image that you're trying to use on your install. So that's just something to keep in mind there. Also with the log for shell vulnerability out here, I really, really appreciate that. Um, hub.docker.com is doing a great job of uh, making sure, uh, of verifying that their images are not compromised by that particular vulnerability. And it actually says right here, this, this has not been detected. Um, and, and there's a full blog post about it if you wanna jump over to there and take a look at what that is. If you're not familiar with it, I, I definitely encourage you to go take a look at that. So if we come back over to here, uh, again, there are there are reviews here. Of course, they're all great. I, never actually paid attention to reviews on here before. But uh, if we scroll down a little bit, there's some information on how to use this. Uh, we're gonna keep scrolling down. And what we wanna do is actually use this with an arbitrary server. Now, what that means is you, I, we've actually done uh, videos in the past where PHP My Admin was part of the Docker Compose stack. And I'm not a fan of that for production purposes. It's just too much of a liability to just click that, that port number and hey, we're logged into the database. Don't do that, it's bad security practice. So don't do that. What we're going to do instead is we're going to do it uh, like this, more or less. Um, but what this actually lets us do here. Okay, so basically, when we go to our IP address and our port, like we see right up here, uh, basically, it's going to ask us for what server we want to log into as well as the the database username and the database password that we want to use to log into said database. So we're not by doing it this way, we're not auto-populating uh, anything. We're adding another layer of protection. So they've got to guess the IP address or the server name. They've got to guess the username, and they've also got to guess the password. Um, you could probably go further steps again with, um, with adding additional layers of security to this, but this is kind of the default installation uh, where we're making them having, have to fill in three bits of information in order to get logged in. And I really think that this is a much more secure way than just attaching it to a database by default. Let's jump back over to here. Uh, right here is the command we're gonna run. So basically what we'll do next is we'll open up our terminal window here like this, and we're gonna go ahead and get logged into my, uh, my demo server here like that. And really all we're gonna do is just paste that in there. Uh, I wanna change that port to 8234. Uh, and here we can see that we're going to uh, we're going to give a Docker command of run. The name will be my admin. Uh, I'm actually going to call this uh, my DB admin. Uh, we're going to run this detached, meaning that it's not dependent on this terminal window being opened. We've got an environmental variable. Let me actually, oops, take that back to the end. We've got this environmental variable of PMA underscore arbitrary equals one. That means we're going to install install this uh, arbit as an arbitrary thing, like we talked about a moment ago. Um, the port will be 8234 on the on the on the public side and then 80 on the internal side. And of course, we're gonna pull the PHP my admin image, and then we're just gonna hit go. Also, while this is downloading and doing its thing, uh, sometimes when I do these videos and I and I do this stuff in a command line like we're doing here, uh, people often ask me, well, can you do this in Portainer instead? Yes. Most of the time, the answer to that is yes. However, I like to do things in command line periodically because 
I feel like it's important to be able to be comfortable uh, in a graphical user interface like Portina or Yacht or Casa OS or whatever the case is, but it's also important, I feel, to be comfortable, at least moderately comfortable in the command line. So here's a little trick that I want to show you for situations like this. If we open up a new tab and we go to composerize.com and then we go to the end of this line right there, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and paste that in. Oops, take this, it always does that. I'm going to take that out. And right here below, right there is our Docker Compose or our stack or whatever you wanna call it. Uh, it just kind of automatically put that out for us just that quick and easy. So now if you wanted to, you could copy this, go over to Portainer and install it that way. So all of that said, let's come over here. Uh, 192.168.69.106 port 9000. We'll get logged in here. And uh, if we come over to our containers, um, my DB admin is right there. And if I open this up, hopefully there we go. So now it's gonna ask us for a server, a username and a password. So let's give that a look. Well, since things can never go the way we want them to, and the server crashed uh, while I was making this video, uh, we're gonna kind of move on. Uh, it is doing stuff in the background here, but of course I've got, like I said, I've got phpMyAdmin installed on uh, other places for database backups and that sort of thing. So uh, once we run that command or we do it through, um, or convert that command from a, a command line interface to a, a Docker Compose interface uh, and get it installed, uh, we should then be brought to uh, a page that looks like this, just like we saw kind of at the beginning, I believe. Uh, so anyway, the first thing we wanna do is go ahead and put in our server address. now. Now that's not going to be the server, our actual Docker server. This is gonna be the container IP address for the database. And uh, if we take a look at that uh, right over here, we're gonna take a look at this WordPress instance right here. Uh, I, I like to test things in WordPress for some reason. So anyway, uh, we're gonna just kind of scroll right over here. That's the database uh, IP address that we want to connect to. So that's what I'm gonna put in right there. And then, uh, of course, like we mentioned uh, earlier, if we come back into here and go into our environment, environmental variables, uh, down here, we've also got a username and a password that we can put in here. Now, this is kind of one of those situations where this isn't terribly secure. Uh, you know, sometimes we will deploy a container uh, that uses a, a .env file to store database credentials, usernames, passwords, connection strings, all of that kind of stuff. Uh, for a more secure instance, you really should store all of that in a, a .env file to prevent easy access of usernames and passwords in your Portainer instance. But this is how we're going to get our information for this particular demonstration. So there you go. So we're gonna grab this username right here. Again, these are super, super not secure uh, credentials that we're using. But again, this was all uh, for demonstrative purposes. I'm gonna go ahead and just paste all of that in there and click go. And here we are, we're logged in uh, and we can, again, we can take a look at our database, uh, all of the information that's in here. You know, we can modify options, here we go. So for instance, we could, if we needed to, uh, again, this is WordPress specific, but uh, you know, we could change um, these just by going in here and double clicking on the, the field, the option that we wanna change and just pressing enter. Uh, you know, we can we can go in here and just change, um, DB Tech is a jerk. Uh, I get that a lot on here uh, and it's true. I'm working on that though. Give me give me some time. Anyway, uh, you can go and you can modify all of this stuff. There's a, there's a lot of stuff that you can do, but I just kind of want to give a demonstration on how to uh, install PHP My Admin, uh, whether it's via command line or Docker Compose, so that you can get in and manage your databases uh, maybe more easily in, in certain regards, or run backups of your databases just as kind of quick one-offs uh, in case you in case you're about to make a big upgrade and you want to make sure that you've got a backup of your uh, con your database container before you do a big upgrade, things like that. Uh, they're, they're all great uses for uh, for a container like PHP My Admin. So if you found this video uh, helpful in any kind of way, do me a favor, give the video a thumbs up. Helps me out quite a bit. I know they took away the dislike button, but at least for now, the like button is still there. So if you could use that, uh, I would appreciate it. Of course, if you've got questions or comments or, or uh, video suggestions, anything like that, the comment section is always down there for anybody who wants to use it. I think, I really, I think that kind of covers everything we wanted to cover in this video. Of course, we had to switch servers halfway through because the tech gods seem to hate me today. So uh, if you want to support the channel, there's a bunch of different ways to do that uh, in the comment section down or in the in the description down below. Again, I am discontinuing memberships at uh, the end of 2021 uh, just for all kinds of different reasons. But I think with all of that being said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. As always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support and I'll talk to you in the next video.